Hi, I'm Jeff. This is Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north. It's another miserable, wet, windy day here in the UK. So what better to do with my time than to repot a couple of Mastervalias that I've got. They really struggled throughout the uh, last couple of months where it was really hot and dry. But they've put a great flowering performance on for the last few months. Um, it's not the best time to repot them. I believe the best time is in spring, uh, late winter and springtime. But the flowers have gone. I think they need a repot, so I'm going to do it now. So let's jump in. And we're in. So this is my Mastervalia Ignea. Now I've had this for a number of years. I don't know if I can tell you exactly how much. Since probably about early 2018. And I repotted it on in October 2018. And it was one of my first orchids from uh, Spices Otics. And it's always done really well for me here in the UK in my greenhouse. More probably because the conditions are very similar to what it likes. Now at the moment it's not looking its absolute best. And it does they do lose leaves anyway occasionally, as all plants that are kind of evergreen do. But you can see one or two black markings on these leaves. When it would come through winter, it was looking a lot healthier. Uh, we had a spell of about two months where it was very, very warm and dry outside. And leading up to temperatures in excess of 30 degrees Celsius. Now, even though I've got the shading up there, the inside of the greenhouse was getting well over 30 and there was nothing I could do about it. It was shaded, all the vents were open, the fans were on, it was still getting over 30. That's one of the breaks, unfortunately, of having a greenhouse. And of course, because I'm not just growing Mastervalias, I'm growing all sorts of plants and some plants love the sun, um, it's a fine balance. And as we know, this is probably why Mastervalias don't do that well in people's grow rooms and conservatories if the temperatures are, you know, like a, a house kind of a temperature in excess of 20 degrees constantly. So it's always a fine line and I still think the prevailing conditions in my greenhouse are more attuned to what it likes. So I think it will recover. Now I'm only supposed to repot these in spring late sorry late late winter and springtime but you can see i mean it's just i've just cut off like literally yesterday the the remaining two flower spikes it's been it's been in bloom since february time and you can see there are new roots coming down now i watched uh, a video the other day another repotting video i think it was from way back from 2016 i think it was one of brad's and he had his in uh, it was in a plastic pot and the, the top growth looked very similar to mine actually it was healthy uh, one or two yellowing leaves but when he took this off the roots were completely dead below that now it was fine it, you know it, as we know with orchids they recover they can manage um, without many roots however he then stuck it in mostly sphagnum moss i think it was now the, the potting media is very very specific to your conditions and where you live now if i recall correctly when i repotted this it was it was purely in terms of what i had at the time which i think was peat moss and perlite and it's done really really well in the peat moss and perlite now having done a little bit of research on it I think the peat moss may be not rich enough. However, again, you go off your own experience. It worked in the peat moss and perlite. So if I take this out and there's no roots in it, then I'm going to try a different approach. If I take this out and there's plenty of roots in it, then that shows me, providing my memory serves me correctly, which it may well not do, uh, providing it is peat moss and perlite, uh, which I've no way of knowing really, but uh, that's where I'm going to put it in if the roots are good. So we're going to have a look at this and see what's going on. So let's see if I can... Oh, actually it's coming out a lot easier. Now that's the first time I've had this out of this pot. Well, first of all, 
I think that's a success with regards to roots. I don't think there's anything wrong with those roots. It's clearly a fine media that I've got it in. I don't think I put any moss in it. Maybe I did. Maybe I did. A little bit of moss there. Yeah, perhaps I did. Like I say, it is. We're going back, and we say October 2018, and it's. Uh, we're on the cusp of July 2020, so it's definitely worth our overdue a repot. So let's take this apart and see what's in there. Maybe there was a little bit of moss as well. I mean, these roots are spectacular. <laughs> Makes a change for me. Fantastic roots for once. Now, there may well be a plug in the centre, because at the time I wasn't aware of these moss plugs. In fact, can pretty much guarantee there will be. There are a few dead ones there. Maybe the good roots are down the outside. Spoke too soon. Too busy congratulating myself. But I mean, it's not, you can see, it certainly wasn't like the one that Brad had that just had no roots whatsoever. It was just completely, it was like chopped off as if somebody eaten it away. Um, yeah, there's the plug. Up in the center there. So my repot, as I didn't really know what I was doing at the time, it looks to me like all I've done is taken, oops, <laughs> bit of collateral damage there. All I've done is taken the plant and just like you would, you would do with a temperate plant, I've not disturbed the roots at all and I've just literally potted it into a bigger pot. Now, the, the downside of that, as you can see here, is that there are no roots in the middle, all the roots are around the outside. So I'm guessing that this sphagnum right in the middle, because it's so old, has broken down and created those acidic conditions that no orchids like. So, <clears throat> I mean, it's clearly not suffered too much, otherwise it wouldn't have bloomed. Um, but you know, we want a we want an optimal plant, don't we? If we can. I mean, you can see the dead ones, these little filaments in the middle. So there's going to be a little bit of cutting away here. Like it's almost like it's. It, they breathe a sigh of relief when you do that. Maybe they don't. That's what it feels like to me. And where I'm going to destroy some of the good roots here too. There's such a big pile of moss down that centre. I think what I will do, I think I will use some because it obviously liked that peat moss down the outside. I'm going to use peat moss and I'm going to put a bit of sphagnum in there as well, just to make sure that it stays damp. And hopefully these new roots down the side that's coming down there, you can see, will get in there and start to grow. So that's enough waffling. So what I'll do, I will speed this bit up and then hopefully I'll come back to you when it's all looking nice and clean and ready to go into its new pot. Oh, just before I do speed it up, you can divide them now. This is a good point to divide them, but I don't want lots of little Mastervalia rignias. I want like a really decent size specimen. See if I can get this bigger, because then it will be worth me being able to take it to an orchid show. <laughs> Not that I'm like that, I'm desperate to win any uh, cardboard certificates or anything, or rosettes, but if I ever do decide to do that, then I'll have it. Plus, I mean, it's nicer to, for me anyway, it's nicer having a, a big, very floriferous specimen than having a, just a small version of it. I'd rather, you know, or, or having se several versions of a, a small plant. I, I want one, one nice big one. And then when I come back after my repot, I'll tell you a little bit about the care needs of this plant. 
So I'll see you after the speed up. Okay, and we're back. So I've got as much moss as I can. A lot of moss in there. I didn't realise there was so much moss. I might have to change my original thoughts in terms of potting media. I think I will probably put a little bit more moss in um, than I thought was actually in. I thought it was all peat moss and it doesn't look like it was. It was mostly sphagnum. Uh, that's what it's done well in. And then round the outside I probably put a little bit of uh, peat moss when I potted it up so what I'm going to do now I'm going to go and give it a blast with a hose pipe just to see if I can get that last little remaining bit of moss in there I've certainly butchered a lot of roots but there's still there's plenty there isn't there plenty there to work with these are all really good roots um, so I'll go and give it a blast I'll get the stuff together the media together and my plan is to put it in a slightly bigger pot. So that was the original pot. Uh, it's only ever so slightly bigger. And you can see it fits in quite nicely and that should give it some space to expand a little bit, which is what I want it to do. And seeing as it did so well in a terracotta clay pot, so I'm gonna do another terracotta pot. So in the words of the great Arnold Schwarzenegger, I'll be back. Okay, and here we are again. So, this is very definitely an experimental mix for me, so we'll see what happens with it. So I've got some perlite in there. I've got some peat moss to make up the bulk of it, along with the sphagnum moss. Now, whether I've got the right proportions of each remains to be seen. And to be honest, I'd be really surprised if it made that much of a difference. I think we had a situation there where we had the master valia in a big old plug of, of probably past its sell by date sphagnum moss and then surrounded by peat moss and perlite now the peat moss as you can see looks nothing like moss it looks like a very fine compost I did read that a fine bark was something you could put it in but I think well we'll see anyway won't we proofs in the pudding so i'll give it a go um i only have two mastervalias i have the ignea and i have the mastervalia snowbird another one that's suffering with the from the heat now the, these round the side with the old leaves and it did actually arrive like that some of the newer leaves uh, that have grown with in, in my care uh, aren't quite as bad although even they have a few black spots on it and I think really that's that's been from the sun um, if you want to see someone who specializes in master valleys head over to mix channel mix master valleys um, and hopefully if he watches this he'll be able to uh, give me a few pointers on on this kind of media but as I say it's very often a situation that you're your own personal growing space can be very different you could you could live next door to each other and need different potting media very much dependent on your own microclimate but uh, you know all input is good input as far as i'm concerned from anybody so if anybody wants to jump in there on the comments i'd be interested to see what people say so that is to go in there so let's have a bash. I don't know if you can see it there. I could do with trying to do it. There we go. Now this is the point where you can divide them, and they do divide pretty naturally. These these come away quite naturally. Um, I could cut down the middle and just pull them apart, but as I 
already alluded to I don't want to do that so this is this has a one hole in the bottom this clay pot and the one hole is covered with a crock just to stop the uh, compost falling out really I always do this I've not done enough I've carefully prepared proportions and there's not enough I'm gonna have to mix a bit more at least I've got some roots to to anchor it in place which obviously is a bonus okay so I shall be back well, this is new large large New Zealand sphagnum moss I quite like this one because it's like long fibered and uh, I find it easier to deal with when it's long fibred do we need a bit of perlite in there won't do any harm will it right so probably got too much now I mean if I was a master valier I would look at this and think that is it's glorious stuff to grow in it looks really nice and airy and light and just perfect for my little orchid roots that's what I think I think the this lockdown sending me a bit do lally do you say do lally in America and Canada and Australia or is it just a I don't even know if we say do lally in the rest of the UK whether it's just a northern thing do lally don't even know how to spell it what a bizarre phrase so I think this is going to love the extra space and I think it's gonna love this new media especially after having the last set of media for rather a long time yes yeah, so I was going to tell you some of its care needs and some interesting information about it so uh, this was first collected from Columbia area around Columbia in 1879 but it was first described in 1871 by Gustav Reichenbach I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but it looks like that's how it should be pronounced. Reichenbach. It's a terrestrial, which is unusual for a lot of the orchids in my greenhouse, at least. And it grows from 3,000 to 3,130, that's very specific, metres in rich hummus soil. Now, by rich, I take that to mean there's lots of nutrients in it, which is a bit strange considering it's supposedly a, a low feeder. It doesn't really like, it's very easy to overfeed them. And I'm not quite sure why that should be, but it's known as a cool to intermediate growing orchid. Um, ignea, this one is an ignea, which means fire red, and it certainly is fire red when it blooms. I shall try and stick up a couple of uh, either some footage from one of my other videos or a photograph I think if you're into orchids then you've definitely seen Master Valia Ignea if you're new to them then you won't have seen it but it'll be worth just having a little look I'm gonna have to mix some more up for my next one okay so good light not direct sun as we know a man isn't in direct sun but by goodness it's certainly got the high temperatures which it doesn't like uh, go down to five five up to about 25 degrees celsius it prefers to be above 10 really humidity supposedly high humidity and it wasn't getting that because i only have one fogger and that was in the warm side um, but for probably 90% of the year it gets high humidity naturally in this greenhouse anyway uh, we've already discussed the media uh, watering keep moist but not soggy let it dry out slightly best to water it with rainwater I never feed this <laughs> I well I say I never feed it 
uh, you know the, the, the routine I, I feed it with rainwater but my rainwater does have nutrients in it so it's getting a low feed uh, but not I'm not measuring out fertilizer uh, but if you do fertilize it they recommend a quarter strength throughout the year perhaps every third or fourth watering uh, but it's easily overfed so make sure you keep flushing it out I mean, when they recommend a quarter strength I mean surely it depends on what's in your feed <laughs> um, I would just say the, the low feeders to just be very careful not to give it too much I certainly wouldn't be feeding it every single watering with you know something that you've mixed up yourself unless you've diluted it quite a bit so I'll put a new label on that one and that's that one done so I'll move that to one side and I'm interested to have a look in this one this hasn't been repotted yet so this is snowbird I've had this one since have I written it on no master valley is snowbird bird um, there's something else on there I don't think I've actually looked at it tovarensis crossed with hmm Mensuresiana to produce snowbird hmm didn't know that right okay so I don't know what this is in no idea and I don't know when I got it but I know I've had it for at least 12 months okay what is it in well it's in polystyrene <laughs> grow it in polystyrene it's fine well the roots are fine by the looks of it oh, it's a bit of all sorts in there what, what is this stuff looks like gravel so it's grown in road gravel um, nothing down the centre so it doesn't like the gravel in the middle lots of moss on top it's like a mound of moss not sure how to get that off it's going to take a bit of fidgeting about with so I think we will head on over to another time lapse while I try and get all this moss off and I shall see you on the other side of it okay so completely hollow down the middle so it didn't like that but what that gravelly stuff that it was in and um, but that's how it came and I'm always a bit reluctant to completely change media on a brand new plant but as I'm finding as time goes on I think it's probably necessary um, I think when these plants arrive I should really have a look inside and see what's going on so at least we've got the roots around the outside even though it was hollow in the middle got rid of some of that moss again I'm not inclined to divide it especially with being such a small plant uh, I can't get all the moss off the top because that seems to be where all the roots have gathered because they didn't want to go down into the uh, the, the highway gravel <laughs> and the, the polystyrene <laughs> why polystyrene bizarre I know it's for drainage I know I understand that but it's still it's not ideal is it really so rather handily that will just fit into what the Master Valley Ignea was in so what I'm going to do I'll give them both a good wash I'll go and give them a wash now and then we'll mix up some more media and we'll get this one potted up as well and then maybe I can tell you a little bit more if there's anything else to tell I'll see you on the other side and we're back again so terracotta pot again with crock in the bottom and all nice and cleaned up now uh, still a few dead bits so uh, there's certainly not a lot there plenty of good roots 
nice big space in the middle there for it to expand and I'm sure that'll be fine so let's get it in there can you see that yes trying to use more of the sphagnum really than the peat moss but the, the sphagnum just bulks it a little the uh, peat moss just bulks it out a little bit like I said on the last one I guess time will tell if this doesn't work and this isn't really what it likes well it'll soon tell me won't it and the thing about orchids is if they do lose all the roots they come back if you get it right as I've found on many an occasion so I did a video about Dendrobium Sarnuk Tylen Black quite a while ago and it had completely lost all its roots and I repotted it with just a top growth looking very shriveled and happy to say it's now about to bloom Roots have returned, pseudobulbs have puffed out again and this is one of the things that's amazing about orchids, they have this such a tremendous kind of ability to rejuvenate. Well, this pot could have been made for it, just the right size. Bigger specimens, hopefully, means healthier and more blooms, which is what we want, don't we, at the end of the day. Can't seem to fill this one. So yeah, so I've told you really all the kernies that I'm aware of. It'll um, be interesting to see if anybody sticks anything in the comments, anything I've missed out. I know we've said this before, if your your own like microclimate that you've got your own conditions uh, are more similar to what it likes then of course it's easy for you isn't it and you know it is an easy plant and for some reason Mastervalia seems to like my conditions of course we try our best to to create the conditions that all our plants like but at the end of the day i think nature tends to win i mean i've got all sorts in here to try and recreate these various conditions but there's just some things i can't do anything about and i i can't like even in even in the middle of winter when the temperature outside is below 12 degrees and my group my heater is keeping it to 12 degrees then that means that all these plants that like a differential in night and day temperatures don't get it because unless i had a, an unending supply of money and could pump up the heater or crank up the heater to 20 odd i just can't afford to do it and uh as far as these master valleys are concerned for the majority of the year they're getting what they want but as we've seen last couple of months when it was very very hot then they've not got what they want and there was nothing i could do about it other than buy an expensive air conditioner you know you're talking hundreds of pounds and i'm just not prepared to do that so they had to rub along and while they don't look their absolute best at the moment because of the, that uh, hot spell hot dry spell as well low humidity then nothing i could do about it and they've just got to they've got to manage but i'm sure you know the the prevailing conditions are what they like and they will they will return they will come back to me in full vigor especially now that they've had this repot hopefully so there we go that's repotting master valleys a little bit of talk about its care needs and of course, yes, I would like some more, but there's so many tropical plants I want to grow, and I've got some really, uh, some really exciting ones coming that, are, that I'm very, very happy to show everybody when they come. So there'll be a video on that coming soon. 
Um, but that's it for now. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. It all helps to support the channel because as you probably know, I'm still, as at the time of filming, I'm still well off that magical thousand subscribers. So I get nothing for doing these, not a penny. It take an awful long time to make. Uh, but the way I look at it, I am doing the, the gardening side of it anyway. So I might as well film it. Uh, but the editing does take a long, long time. I'm, I'm spending every every weekend editing now and during the day as well, in between working for a living. So any help in terms of likes, comments, subscribes is all very welcome. So that's it for now anyway, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.